Hey folks, welcome to another custom lesson. This one has been requested by Ryu Hayabusa. I love the name, by the way. In any case, the weapons in question are Kusarigama and Tanfa, specifically corrupted weapons. Cores are Magatsu, Shuten Doji, Lightning Gods Ayomi. Spirits are Usarahicho, Ninetales, and later I will be fighting both Yoshitsune and Yorimitsu, so it's going to be pretty crazy. In any case, let me talk about some things about my gear before I get onto the Soul Cores, and that is I am using a Demon Horde Katana that is corrupted because I wanted the Anima Bonus Grapple. Uh, the Soul Cores I, were using, I was using didn't have the most Anima Bonuses, so I just wanted a quick, easy way to make sure I could get my Anima Bonuses, and I'll talk about why uh, when I get to the Soul Cores. The other weapon is just my standard Kusari Gamma with Life Drain Active Skill on a Corrupted Weapon. Nothing else. Nothing else has changed whatsoever. Let's get onto the Soul Cores first. So I started with using Ninetales. And when it comes to these Soul Cores, I went for a fire-based theme. Reason being, I wanted to take advantage of Anima Bonus Scorched Enemy. So anytime I could inflict fire, I would get Anima that much more quickly. But as you guys know, enemies who dodge away lose the Scorch status effect. The same applies for the player as well. So that can be very frustrating and it can be difficult to reapply the fire debuff over and over again. So I wanted to make sure I had something else I could work with aside from just relying upon this anima bonus, which is great by the way. So let's go on to the Soul Cores. Shuten Doji was specifically requested and the reason I picked this one is because it has Yokai ability key pulse. It also happened to have anima bonus final blow, but that's not really something that works too often compared to say the grapple but hey i'll take it I'll replace this with whatever anima bonus you'd like and if it's a one that scales a lot let's say anima charge bonus cumulative gauge or something like that or sorry amrita gauge then you can boost it to rank 30 otherwise it's really not too important but for me yokai ability key pulse was the most important and when it comes to the soul core itself i believe the animation is pretty fast and the range is actually pretty crazy too it's a pretty good Soul Core for applying pocket buffs to yourself and inflicting fire upon multiple enemies. So really good core. Very high attunement cost though. And I'll talk about the attunement cost in a moment. Next up is Skeleton Warrior. This is probably the single Soul Core I would say you want to boost up to rank 30 on this. Simply because you want to boost this Anima Bonus range weapon hit as high as possible. Everything else is ultimately secondary. The Anima is great. Um, there are other two stats I just happen to have doesn't really matter just any generic skeleton warrior with rank 30 means you can use this much more often and it's even more noticeable in the dark realm which is great skeleton warrior um, as an ability is pretty rad let me get rid of the controller uh, is pretty rad it's pretty fast and it's just a, one of those animations that just seems to make sense for players in terms of understanding it so great way to just take a breather do an attack get some key back and you can keep firing this the more anima bonus that you have in this so definitely rank this up last but not least i went with ipon datra as opposed to other options simply because it is a fire based soul core and i wanted to take advantage of the anima bonus ipon datra is very good for key damage very popular for a much for many reasons such as it's quick and it staggers targets it can flatten human opponents as you can see um, this one happened to have anima bonus grapple great and it also happened to have a tomb and cost minus one so put that on any one of your cores because as you can see with 23 a tomb at limit and shuten doji taking up 11 of that we need to make sure we can actually equip these cores in the first place so i just found one that had an attunement cost minus one but these are all fire based and they work synergistically with nine tails let's go on to the other guardian spirit in question which was usurahicho so I didn't actually use too many water-based themes whatsoever. I, I didn't want to do that because I was restricted and making sure I could use Magatsu Warrior and Lightning Gods Yomi. So I put that on here. Now for this Magatsu Warrior, this is the second core. I would say you want to boost to rank 30. Reason being, Anima Charge Bonus Cumulative Damage is awesome. It is the Feral-based anima charge bonus and being able to boost that to rank AA makes a huge difference on phantom and brute cores not so much on feral cores but on phantom and brute cores it's awesome also because I'm using lightning gods of Yomi I wanted to take advantage of the Amrita bonus inflict electrified that I happen to have which is cool basically it just fills up your gauge a little bit this is just a luxury thing life drain yokai ability hit is also kind of a luxury thing it's not really necessary 
on Magatsu Warrior, but it's awesome. And then this one has Yokai Ability Key Pulse, which is, you know, one thing I like to have for every core. Now, next up was Lightning Gods of Yomi. You'll see that I maxed out its rank, and it's a white core, I know. But the reason why I maxed out the Soul Core rank has nothing to do with these two locked effects. It has everything to do with the Anima Bonus Inflict ailment. Um, there's actually a really interesting interaction that occurs with this Anima Bonus Inflict ailment and Magatsu Warrior. It is awesome, and I'll showcase that soon enough. Uh, Lightning God Ziyomi is super fast. Uh, evasive move that inflicts a lot of lightning. I can't believe I forgot to show Magatsu. Magatsu Warrior, there are two versions you can activate for it. So let me bring up the tooltip. Sprout a set of Magatsu Warrior arms on your back that perform sl slashes so strong they generate shockwaves. Execute the skill again to unleash a second more powerful attack. Now this version will cost 9 anima, but it is high risk, high reward type of scenario. So really good. Now, moving on. The thing is, this Soul Core also has one of the lowest attunement limits. So I was very strapped for which Soul Core I could use. So the only real choice that I had was the Scampus, which actually is pretty good, despite what you might think. So the Scampus animation is really fast in both startup time and recovery time. So you can use it as a quick reposition. It can knock targets down, humans specifically, if they're on low key, and then it can trip them and help get you that final blow. And so it can be pretty handy. It's just a quick escape core reposition. Um, bear in mind while the animation is playing out, if you do take hits, you also will take key damage, which can be problematic. So use it to just maneuver yourself more than anything as opposed to like trying to dodge through something. But let's get on to understanding these soul cores first and just knowing what we're working with in terms of input buffering. So again, what I'm going to use as a baseline is to see the soonest my character will block. And to illustrate this, let me make sure I get the controller back on. So you'll see my character is going to just hold on block after I do a soul core. So check this out. Ready? Shoot and doji. Pretty quick. And pretty quickly act, act. But not too bad. A skeleton warrior is pretty quick as well. Epon is noticeably fast as well. So these are all three really fast cores. Let's go to Magatsu Warrior. So six anima version. Reasonably quick. What about nine anima? Reasonably quick downtime. What about Lightning Gods of Yomi? It's not the fastest, but still pretty good. Scampus is really fast as well. Also with the Scampus, you can control the direction you're going. Um, and then when you let go, then it, you just basically pop out near instantly. If you just want to do a quick motion, you can just do a quick tap. It does cost a little bit of anima, but it's not too shabby. So definitely worth investigating. Now let's showcase the Yokai Shift stuff together. Just Yokai Shift alone so you know how to kind of combo with it. Mogatsu is a massive pressure play. Let's so showcase Yokai Shift with that. So here's a combo, activate Guardian Spirit, and then you can use Yomi. Oh, it's dead because it's been confused. <laughs> My bad. Another thing you can do is when you teleport in, you can use Magatsu Warrior as a massive pressure play. Um, if you're far away and need to roll in, by all means do so. Now what about Ninetales? So we can do this, throw out Skeleton Warrior, Get a lot of damage, we can teleport in, use Epon, get some buffs, burn everything to a crisp. You just want to do a ton of fire, there you go. And always, but it's always nice to have something that works well when you teleport in. Teleport in, bonk. What would you look at that? What's nice about this is because we're using Corrupted Weapons, we're going to be able to inflict Confusion that more often. We have access to four out of the five primary elements, which is pretty sick. Now let's showcase that finding that I was talking about involving Inflict Ailment in Magatsu Warrior. So I know in the dojo my anima bar fills up to full basically no matter what, right? So you know I'll do Yomi. And then you see it went back to full, right? And I got the anima bonus inflict element and it didn't really look particularly remarkable if you noticed, but now pay attention to my anima bar despite that. 
you're gonna see that as Mogatsu Warrior hits, I'm getting little chunks of anima back. It is awesome. That is despite the dojo stuff happening. So, Magatsu Warrior, all things considered, will almost effectively be cheaper than you might think. So it is ridiculous for that reason. But it won't really cost 9 anima, it'll cost significantly less. And the higher your anima bonus for inflict ailment is, the better. I'm at C rank, and you were seeing I was getting like 0.3 every now and again. That's a pretty big difference. It's pretty awesome. So that's why I recommend you get anima bonus inflict ailments if possible. If not, that's okay. It's just extra luxury. It won't matter if you're using anima bonuses kind of like I am, such as anima bonus grapple, or if you have arch yokai talismans, just anything to help you generate anima. Now let's just showcase some weapon play on its own, and then I'll start mixing in soul cores together so we can really understand the whole package. So when it comes when it comes to the weapons, my advice would be to take advantage of the Kusarigama's propensity to keep targets at range, and then use this in conjunction with sheet swaps so you can kick butt. So let's showcase this yet again against a human, just some Kusarigama plays you can work with. So let's say Retreating Strike, Sheet Swap to Tiger Sprint. You can always use Kusarigama Flash Attack if a target's too far away. Trip him with Scampus, because why not? Tangle Strike after an Evasion Attack. Sorry, a Dodge Attack is always nice. We've got a Zuna Drop, which will help you regenerate key. It can be a fun time. Let's try some other things involving, say, Deadly Mark. The so Deadly Mark is one of my personal favorite initiators. As you can see, I'm basically taking advantage of the close range properties as much as I can. Oops, let's try this again. It's pretty awesome. Another thing you can do, Swallow's Wing, Bean Gun Flux too, if I can do it right. Pretty neat. Or if you don't want to do a guard based ability, Swallow's Wing, into High Stance Strong. Just take advantage of creating distance with both of your weapons to help you play fluidly. And then other things now, it's time to mix in weapon based play with the Soul Cores. And then we'll go crazy. Alright, so what do we got? Engage. Oops, I'm out of there. And give him my life back. Let's do a sheet swap to quick draw. Get some great damage. Do this. Keep you in place. Move back. Re-engage with Deadly Mark. Flash attack. Shoot them doji. It'll be awesome. I would advise using each of these soul cores as combo enders as opposed to initiators. Maybe the exception to this might be Yomi. Yomi is pretty awesome. But everything else, more or less, you can kind of put towards the end of an attack chain. I find it works really well in that capacity. Um, Ipon maybe also one of the other ones. Maybe even Shuten Doji. But I find that it can be really difficult sometimes to work that out. Retreating Strike and a Tiger Sprint. Very nice. So you'll have a lot to play around with and it can be quite ridiculous. And you mix in the Yokai Shift and stuff can be pretty rad. But all in all, summary wise, I wanted to have a fire based theme with Ninetales because of Anima Bonus Scorched Enemy. But in the event that I couldn't get an enemy Scorched for a variety of reasons, let's say they dodge a lot and they put the fire out, well then I wanted other generic Anima Bonuses I could rely upon. So that's why you see what I have here. And then when it came to Usurahicho, because I was locked to using Magatsu Warrior and Lightning God Ziyomi, again, I wanted to focus less on the fact that I don't, I'm not really using a water-based theme, but rather 
that I can get some unique anima bonuses to again assist me with my generation. And this stuff will be especially handy on the upcoming enemies, Yoshitsune and Yorimitsu, who are straight up crazy. So enough talk, I'll showcase what's possible last time here, and then we'll get on to the showcase. So let's just kick these guys' butts. What's up, man? How's it going, dude? Hey, nice ailments you got. Oh, I'm sorry. Nope, I'm tripping you. Oh, you're dead. Nice try, dude. Nice try. I'll let's showcase this against a Yoki. Use all the things that I can before they die. What you doing? Oh, guess what? I'm gonna get my life back. Can you do anything? The answer is no. Oh, he's dead. Let's pretend he's still alive. <laughs> Let's pretend he's still alive. All of fire. Pretend I teleport. Do that. Okay, they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you'll have some fun. In any case, let's get on to the gameplay showcase. I'll see you guys in a bit. Gameplay showcase time, the usual. This time I'm doing a scroll the damned with Yoshitsune and Raiko, so this is going to be extra challenging. First up with Yoshitsune, the general strategy is to preemptively avoid his attacks so that I can get my attacks off while he's dodging and while he's stuck in long animations. So Yoshitsune is very fast, but again, he commits to these animations and has very few deviations when it comes to his mix-ups, which is why you're going to see me be able to get away with many attacks because I'm just dodging early and that usually syncs up with his attacks and then he's kind of at an awkward angle for many of his animations and so then I can put out a bunch of attacks myself. And so that's what I'm trying to do. Now when he uses the Gust Talisman, you can actually just shoot a couple projectiles at him. And if you have the Yatamir, you can basically deplete the Gust Talisman with almost a war of just reflecting projectiles back and forth. Skeleton Warrior would have been a safe bet. In any case, when he's on the perch, the objective is to, well, you can do that, <laughs> and reflect all those projectiles with Yatsumir right back at him. Or, more typically, you're going to use key damaging moves that have the hitbox to hit above. So, Sword Key with the sword is really good. Kusarigama has high stance attacks. And here's an attack combo you can use. When he does Sacred Bird Cry, I like to use Flowing Shadow just as it starts to avoid the entire barrage, and then I'm free to do pretty much whatever I'd like. So yeah, prioritize getting behind your Shitsune. It makes a massive difference. Deadly Mark for the re-engage. Again, I'm just playing very evasively because I'm not able to preemptively take advantage of various attacks. I'm trying to, again, just avoid everything that I can. It makes a huge difference. Dodge earlier than I'd like to, normally. I'm just, again, that's pretty much it. Let's use Magatsu with an Inflict Ailment benefit to get a lot of Anima back, which is pretty cool. And then let's go finish our Shitsune off. Now he's on a perch, I'm gonna go for, I believe, Crimson Flurry, and that just straight up kills him. It depletes his key and kills him before he can even drop forward to the ground, so... Your Shitsune is now done. Next up is Raiko. Raiko is actually devastating, not even necessarily because she has a wonky crazy moveset, but because she has the curse and she can inflict purity on you, which means you take an additional 50% key damage on top of what the curse can do and she has a tendency to attack really quickly and as you know she has a bunch of special moves so she basically zero key combos you to death which can be very frustrating. So my game plan is to prevent that altogether so I'm going to be overall very safe and my objective is to deplete her key, keep her key low and punish her as much as I can. Fortunately with things like Shuten Doji in which I can apply fire near instantly with lightning out gods of Yomi which I can quasi evade and inflict lightning. I get a lot of confusion time, and it's only going to get compounded with Yokai Shift, with the Guardian Spirit Talisman, and me throwing out Magatsu, which didn't work as well, but bottom line, she's just severely pressured for damage, and she's just going to get absolutely ruined. I inefficiently switched to Ninetales, but that's just because I wanted to showcase the Yokai Shift power, and even if it isn't the best showcase of it altogether, fact of the matter is, nearly three quarters of her life is depleted, and that was intentional in that I didn't actually want to kill her outright, because I've done it before, and I didn't really get to showcase what it's like to deal with her when she goes into her living weapon form. And so continuing on the same plan, which is being very cautious because of that anime kill move that she basically has. Um, I get lucky, this is the second time she's done that burst attack, which is pretty rare. It's, it's strangely one of the easier things to work with. The reason why I keep firing off Skeleton Warrior is because I'm hoping for a headshot. It can happen. 
and so that can be very valuable against humans. Now when she's in living weapon form, assume everything is literally something you cannot afford to get hit by. Fortunately, because she is having permanent hyper armor, it means she commits to all of her animations. So if you can find a nice sweet spot as I try to, say with this attack, then you can punish her quite well. Also, many of these attacks, and I don't think I got to showcase this uh, in this clip, but treat her Soyamaru sword normally when she's not in living weapon form as just a normal sword, which means you can parry it, you can use timely guards and whatnot. In any case, I give her Epon and a, and a nice little final hit. I was hoping to do Severing Spin against her as a finish just for irony, but it didn't work out. In any case, I did it on her corpse. Thank you guys so much for watching, hope this was helpful, and I'll see you guys next time.